power's on. Rolling. Okay, we have an ATI Array Technologies tracker motor for a solar array. It's single axis, and it, here's our tracker motor and transmission and control box. Also, there's a drive shaft right here that turns every 10 minutes or so with the torque of a car, basically. And we all, it's always a good idea to turn these off with the safety switch before we do work. And um, there's a sequence uh, we need if we're gonna reset, it's a manual reset for this tracker motor. So you can see with this red light on here, the power's on to this tracker motor. So all, this is a simple little rotary switch. It says off now and the light went off. So at this point, we're gonna take the plastic cover off the top of the motor so that we can see some LED lights. See if I can do that. Back the screws out about halfway. Four screws on four corners. If it was afternoon, this solar panel wouldn't be crammed so close to the motor. During, during the morning time, since this motor's on the east side of the array, the solar panel's down in this position, but if we were here in the afternoon, it would be wide open as the solar panel moves towards the west. So if, if you're here doing this in the morning at this site, you're gonna be sort of in a tight little confined space doing your work. So I backed out the, four, the screws on the four corners and let's see if this plastic cover slips right off. All right. Now, if you can zoom in a little bit, you can see those LED lights. Those are the ones, the stalled tracker motor probably has an amber light, but this one is working properly. And what does it look like? A blinking green light. Okay, that sounds good. So now I'll leave that off. And if it was amber and if this was a stalled tracker, the next step would be to open this cover because there's some little controls inside here. And yeah, it's one clip at the top and it will only open when it's turned off. And so you have to just pop that open. And this is the off on switch right here. And in order to do this reset, the door has to be open so you can get into the button, but it also has to be turned back on. So I'm gonna turn it on with my hand. Now you can see the red lights on, it's got power. And then the next step to do, if we were going to reset this, is just to open that little door and that little black button's the reset button. And then uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna hold it in for a few seconds. And hopefully there's a amber light over here it turns to a blinking green light. And once that's done, it's reset. So um, that is it really. So what, at, at this point, we just put it back together. So in order to close this door again, this switch has to be horizontal to match up with the, the, the little handle here. So that's turning it off. So once that's happened, it's turned off. Oh yeah, thank you, assistant. <laughs> we close that up. And then we get this little latch back in place. It's kind of a tricky one. And then it's all good to go. So then we would just slide this cover back on. And you can see this is like a little fan for the motor. Oh, and it changes. It's like a position of the brushes. There's brushes in the motor and so they change the light. But you should see a blinking green if everything's good. So let's see here. This little label goes forward on the outside of the motor to make it go on right. There we go. And we can just Tighten those up. I only backed them out halfway. Just slide that plastic cover off. It's like a fan cover. Sometimes I think you can see through the little holes in the lid and see the LED lights, but it's easier just to take this off as well. And this, the little bolts were 
kind of paint it on. The first time you ever remove one of these, it's going to be a little tight. I used my Klein 6-in-1 screwdriver, that socket that fits most of those tech screws. It's the large size tech screws, like the number 10 large size tech screw socket is what those are. I think they're 1032 screws. All right, this cover's on tight. So now that it's done, we'll just turn that back on. And then we would call monitoring and ask them to try to uh, get the arrays to move and see if this tracker starts um, rotating back to the position so that it synchronizes with all the rest of them, uh, which might be completely to the west by that point. There we go. Okay, this is one of our typical equipment racks on the back of the transformer pad and switch gear. So on the back here we have a rack and we have the DAS box and the DAS 2 is the battery backup for the DAS and we have a panel board small one 1L and a small one 1H and then two control boxes for the arrays. So this panel board has the three tracker motor breakers 15 amp, three phase, 480, one, two, three, and something else. Uh, that And maybe this is their main breaker, 50 amps for that box. And up here is one of the two control boxes. And here's the other two, two of two control boxes right here for the trackers, one and two. So we're gonna just open those up and check them out. One has the, the power this one's just controls, like data. And then this other one has the power circuits. One, two, three. So these are the feeders for those tracker, individual tracker motors. And it's got power and data. So we've got 20, looks like something like 28 volt DC for the data and a, and a data control wire. And then three 480 volt, three phases, each block for an individual motor. So um, sometimes when we're troubleshooting a dead motor or a stalled motor, we can come here and make sure there's 480 going to the motor and we can check data wires and see if there's 24 volts coming in um, for this equipment and that's about it this is an emergency stop if you want the system to shut off they move so slowly we almost ha never have an emergency but you know it's more like turn off the tracker motor so you can work on it okay so next, next, well they have, each one has an ethernet wire feeding it individually. So this one and this one, ethernet wires come to the main dash. This is our dash box. Data acquisition. So here's our switch. This is our cellular modem right here. There's only one ethernet out and it goes to this switch and then it's all full. So there's about one, two, three, four, five, six, eight ports on this ethernet switch and they're all being used by um, different components here. So if we need to plug in uh, our laptop so that we can access the tracker control uh, I guess it's a web browser page like any other piece of equipment where you would you would find the um, IP address of the tracker control and log into it with an admin password name name and password it, I believe it just opens right up but sometimes the techs have us go on site and plug our laptop in and log into the control system for the trackers. So all we would have to do is plug in anywhere on this 
ethernet switch. All these ports are full. So here's one here that goes up to the, the inverter data logger. So if we have to, we can just unplug the inverter data logger, which comes in here in port number four. And we would tell monitoring we were doing that and the inverters will stop reporting, but they'll keep making power. And then we could plug into number four right there. Uh, and then start accessing anything on our local network here. Okay, so we're gonna just put that back in. They lost communication for like one minute. Um, this, this dash runs on 28 volts DC. So, um, if we didn't see any blinking lights, we'd start to look for problems like little breakers down here that could be tripped or open um, that would be stopping the power from getting into the controls. Right here is our battery backup. Two large batteries, charge controller, and a 28 volt power supply so and then there's it, it creates 28 volts and it charges these batteries and if the main power goes out these batteries keep feeding the control circuit 28 volts for maybe two three days they're pretty beefy batteries so um things that we can troubleshoot for stalled trackers but on our upcoming site we know we can see the trackers but we know the motors are, they lock themselves out. 